we can do what we can as consumers, but there's so much more power in the hands of corporations, governments. So with that caveat still, um, is there something the average person can do to just like know whether their plastic is like more or less harmful, like in the ways that you mentioned, or is it just not even labeled? Um, it really like, no, essentially that's part of why that's part of why stuff like the idea of a carbon footprint, which was actually like that whole concept of like your carbon footprint was made up by, I wanted to say it was Enron or Exxon. It was a big oil corporation. And it was like their push to make it so people thought it was more of an individualist issue rather than, right, like corporations and governments who really need to do something. And when it comes to like whether plastic is recycled or not recycled or just trying to track the sustainability of different plastics, the messaging on it and the laws around how it's labeled are so haphazard and so easy to get around that. Right. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't be kind of going towards the like, oh, well, this water bottle says it's made from recycled plastic. So I'm only going to buy that one because it's probably not, to be honest. Um, if a company is doing that, especially like Coca-Cola, I think, has like several initiatives right now where they're saying like, oh, we're going to make sure all of our Coca-Cola bottles like from all of our products are recycled or made with recycled plastic. Most of the times the, re the reasons they're doing that is because it's more profitable for them somehow. So a lot of the plastic bottles that say they're made with recycled plastic, the reason that the companies are willing to do that is because they've found a way to make it profitable for them. Um, sometimes that means they've made it with less plastic, so it's lighter and it's cheaper for them to, to manufacture it. Sometimes they've managed to get plastic from someplace else that's like recycled, but also it's just maybe scraps from another plastic manufacturing plant. So instead of getting it you, know, you think you're getting like, oh, when I recycled a water bottle, now I'm buying a recycled water bottle. You think it's like a one for one, but that's almost never really the case. And it's like a not... certain percentage, like a small percentage. I think it's just the word recycled means, mm. right? It doesn't have one specific meaning when we talk about manufacturing, but it does have one specific like cultural understanding of what a recycled item is. Mm. Um so it's, that's not to say like nobody should try to do anything, right? Like I do, I have a, re a reusable water bottle. I try to avoid plastic when I can, but that doesn't mean, like it doesn't make you better than anybody else if you can do that um, because accessibility is a big issue and it's not, that's not the thing that's going to like change the way the ocean is being polluted right now. That isn't something that like my individual purchasing is really going to impact going to help me it's going to make me feel a little bit better and a little bit more connected um but people shouldn't be making these purchase changes making these like lifestyle changes with the end goal of being just oh i'm bad i'm not i'm not part of the problem anymore um and that's that is i think what i've seen from like when i used to have instagram you'd see like kind of lifestyle influencers talking about how like how little plastic waste they use and that kind of being the the end it's kind of like that's the that's it they did it they did the thing instead of it being like well i'm going to reduce plastic because i care about that because i don't want to like be putting more plastic into the world but also i'm gonna try to make sure that i am aware when there are things on the books that i can vote for or that i can like educate other people about um that will actually help with plastic reduction like plastic waste the easiest to just sort of like hit is that like people talk about recycling but they kind of forget that like the three R's are like reduce, reuse, recycle. And so like recycling is actually like the last part of that. And like when that sort of system came into place, when environmentalists were talking about reduce, reuse, recycle in the, I think the sixties and seventies is when they started that. Um, they meant it to be in that order. Like that was a very specific thing. Like you reduce the amount of things that you use. So you use reusable stuff when you can, you try not to get to go if you can help it. Um, and uh, again, like that is all going to be completely based on it. It is very expensive to not get single use items. It is literally like not something many people can afford. Um, so if you can't afford it, it is not your fault. Essentially, like it is not your responsibility to try to, you know, work a budget that is barely working for you and also feel bad about having to use single use items. That's, right, that's just economics, it's shit and it's not your fault. Um, reuse is buying things, right, that you can reuse. So if you get, like, a tub of something, if I get, like, a tub of cottage cheese and the tub has an actual lid, 
I'll reuse that, right? Like it's not going to last as long as like if I bought something new, but it'll still be fine for a lot of things. So, like then you go to recycling. So like recycling really isn't supposed to be the first step on this where that was another thing that a lot of corporations did. Um, oh man, cottage cheese is good though. Um, uh, <laughs> corporations did work to kind of like make people forget about reduce and reuse because if you're reducing the amount of shit you buy and then reusing the shit that you do buy, right? Like that's not profitable. And so that's another thing where like, it all sounds kind of like conspiracy until you find the memos from these corporations that are very much like, well, we need to like, we need to find a way to like make this work for us. Um, so then when we talk about recycling and the energy that it takes, uh, it is, in the US and Canada in particular, it is very expensive to recycle. There are not enough recycling plants is a big part of it. And then um, I know it kind of in the US at least, it really depends on your county or your city. Like when I grew up, uh, we had bins, right? We had a plastic bin, we had a glass bin, we had an aluminum bin, we had a paper bin. Um, and depending on where I've lived, that's kind of the most separated that the US gets a lot of times, I don't have recycling in Hawaii. Hawaii barely has any areas that actually offer recycling services. Um, other areas, if you have recycling at all, it's like one big blue, blue bin and that's it. Um, but if you go to countries, um, like I lived in Japan and Korea for a while, they have not just like plastic glass paper, but the plastic is also separated into different types of plastic because that's a big deal. Um, you have to clean it. So there are countries where like you actually get fined by the like local like municipal government if you try to recycle plastic that is dirty. If you have like a yogurt cup, you have if you have a cottage cheese tub you haven't cleaned out, um, they'll fine you for it because those are the things sorting the different types of plastic and then cleaning them enough that they're actually able to recycle. That's where it's really expensive. Like that's where it takes the most energy and it's, plastic isn't because plastic is so soft you can't. You kind of just can't throw it all in like a really hot chemical bath and like clean it and it's good like things stick into it and then the chemical bath will start to break it down in ways that make it less able to be recycled fully whereas like with glass and aluminum you can just soak them in something really hot and like basically boil all of the foodstuffs off of it and then recycle it it's not a problem so plastic recycling is expensive it is energy inefficient if we're doing it in that way, if we're just throwing a bunch of dirty plastics into a container outside where it's going to get really nasty and then sending it off to a recycling factory that doesn't have the facilities able to clean it. That's actually part of why um, China stopped taking a lot of plastic from the U.S. West Coast. We'd been, sh we'd been selling it to China to recycle. Part of it was there was too much, but a lot of it was that it would get to China and... I cannot imagine how fucking disgusting this like like old milk jugs and stuff would have been after sitting in like your recycling bin outside for two weeks and then in a dump somewhere for months and then on a cargo vessel for weeks and then they'd finally get to China and it would just be fetid uh, and they weren't able to recycle it. So that was right like kind of the thing we were told was that the plastic was too much for them to use but it was actually too dirty. Yeah, because that's sort of what happened here was, uh, like, at least in places I've lived, which is just like two cities in Alberta, but there was, in the last few years, basically this shift from, like, we're doing all this sorting to, you know, you're going to put it all in one bag and we'll right. sort it to, we're not even pretending anymore, just, yeah. like, we were not taking basically any plastic, and it's just more of, like, an acknowledgement of reality, but it sucks. It's still, if you have access to a recycling bin, um most areas that still do that it is still good to do it is still like it is good to put your site like to sort your recycling out when you can um because at the least then you have kind of your trash trash that isn't plastic is mostly compostable so if you have a dump that is mostly filled with not plastic it's still mostly going to be like food scraps and things that will break down over time paper um so you can put those in a landfill and it's not great, but at least at some point, you know, it will kind of like, it will break down in some way. It will compost at least to some degree. So if you have the plastic sorted out where you can just put the plastic in another facility, um, right? It's not great, 
there is some amount of like, well, maybe we'll be able to figure this out at some point. But at the very least, you know where all of the plastic is. It isn't mostly mixed into a bunch of stuff that could could be composted that is actually totally fine to kind of throw outside. Um, what I'm saying is throw all of your trash that isn't plastic just outside. Just on the ground. Just out the window, you know, old yeah. school. Uh, Preferably in a neighbor's yard. Yeah. Preferably your worst neighbor, right? 